guys, it's Joe here. I'm in the woods with Sco today, and uh, we're going to start a new video series called Budget Knives. Um, I posted a knife video a while ago showing my knives, and people like them, but a lot of people find that they're too expensive. A lot of my, my knives are custom knives. Well, in this series, I think that we're going to dispel the myth that you need a, <laughs> an expensive knife to, to play in the woods. I got this, uh, this knife. It's actually, let's call it what it is. It's an SE or rat knockoff. It's called a SEMA jungle survival knife <laughs> looks exactly like a, a rat or an sc3 so we're gonna uh we're gonna beat it up we're gonna try and break it today let's get over to the woods what are you doing getting all wet it's only 10 in the morning bud it's a little deep we had a uh, torrential rains for a couple days here my old muck boots are holding up for now I'm cutting it close here, man. <laughs> I'm gonna get a soaker. What is that, bud? Hey? What is that? Little jawbone action, bud? Oh, this is pretty fresh. Leave it. This jawbone's intact. Pretty good. I think I'm gonna keep the jawbone. The skull's a little banged up. Might have some brains in there still, but... Maybe I'll put it up in a tree. If that's still there, in a week or so I'll come grab it. I doubt it'll be there. My main purpose for this knife is going to be a car knife. I'm putting together a little uh, car bug out bag and this knife is going to go in there. Um, there's a couple reasons why. It's just a solid make, it's no, nothing pretty and I think that I can use the end to bust some glass if I need to. So a little bit of specs on the knife, the blade length from where the blade starts because there is this little bit of a choil. Oh, you want this knife in your face? Is that, hold on. There's a little bit of a choil. This blade length, blade to blade, it, blade to tip is 3.35 inches long. It's got this black coating on it, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll see how it goes with the fire steel and I'm sure I can wear it off with a little bit of use. It's got my car to handles, or at least it's, looks like Micarta to me. It's only 5 30 seconds thick which is which I like because a lot of these knives are going to be 3 16 or at least a quarter inch thick. Um, it's a thin handled knife like the SCs are. It's got this exposed tang that you can use for a lanyard or crushing bones or maybe even a window break if you wanted to. Uh, it's got some jimping on the spine and I believe it's a flat grind or a V grind. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I don't have these style knives. I don't really like a V-grind or a flat grind, but we're going to see how it works for me in the bush today. And the first thing I want to do with this knife is the old Morska Hansky beat into a log and stand on it to see if it breaks test. I'm doing this down log so I'm not penetrating a live tree and hurting it. I actually do like this little pommel plate on here so that I don't have to worry about it. Move, Scout. Come on. Go, Sco. Okay, she's in there. Can you see that? Okay. Just going to try to get another angle for you here. That's the knife stuck in like you saw it. Alright, and then zoom out. I'll try and step on her again. Sufficient. Yeah, she didn't bend or anything. Didn't break, didn't bend. Still perfectly straight. That's cool. That's impressive. It shouldn't bend. It's 530 seconds worth of steel, and I weigh about 100 pounds. So <laughs> it's a good thing it didn't bend. So, what's next for this knife? Let's, uh, Let's split some wood down and try and strike a fire steel maybe, because realistically that's what I do. I don't go around pounding my knife into trees and standing on it for ladders and stuff. Yeah, let's get some wood. So this is some really, really dense oak. And uh, they're longer pieces than I would normally try to baton. And this one's all funky, got some gnarls in it and stuff. 
uh, some burls. So let's um, let's split this one, the thicker one. And again, this this blade is just over three inches long, the cutting edge. To be, to be fair, there was a natural check in this wood, so it made it a little bit easier, but let's, uh, let's split it again where there's no natural check. Although it is in half, so again, it's making it easier, but that's part of it, making your life easier with these knives. It's, not, it's gear and skills and knowledge. Okay, well, that's splitting down really nice. When I'm holding any knife, I do normally grab it up right by the blade. Where are we? Right by the blade. But here has that choil. So look at my hand, where my hand is when I'm holding that. I have super control of that because my hand is so close to the blade. And it's not making too bad of curls, to be honest with you. It's a different angle than I'm used to. I have to go more deep, definitely way deeper than a Scandi. But those are some of the curls I was able to produce. Let's uh, let's strike those bad boys. See if this coated blade strikes a fire steel. All right, let's try her out. Oh yeah, no problem at all. There we go. Or not. There we go. Nice. Not too shabby. So let's take a look at the at the sheath. It comes in this. Uh, I'm sure it's a plastic, not a kydex. Uh, actual sheath part is okay, but the belt buckle is insane in my opinion. This is metal, like straight metal. Look at the size of that thing. Um, I don't like it. I don't like the metal part of it. If I were to take off the metal part, which you can do with these screws, not a big deal, uh, and just have it, like uh, like I said, for my car, it'd be all right. Um, but it snaps in. There's no way it's coming out at all. Like, it's not coming out. You have to actually give it a little tug for it to come out. Um, yeah, the retention is great. I don't like the, the metal, like I said, it's heavy. Uh, but what are you gonna, what do you, what do you want, you know? can't have everything so uh, this little paracord in the front too can be used as a net carry if you want it although again I would have I would take off the metal part because of the weight I should have done this before I started beating on it but this is a receipt so thin paper and it seems like the edge is held up I haven't done much to the edge at all just that little bit of batoning and pounding it into the wood but as you can see holds up fine so I actually kind of ripped it on that one, but not too, not too bad. And I imagine if uh, after a while, if I start to strop this, it can be convex the edge, which I would prefer. Here's a dead tree I'm gonna throw the knife at, do some uh, knife throwing skills, plus see, see if I can break her. Ah, there we go. Did you get it? Did you get it? Get it. There she be. There she be. Let's go take a look. So I threw it six or seven times at least. You can see it bounced off there, there, where else? There. Anyways, she's in. She's in pretty good. I don't think it's any worse for wear. Let me set up the camera and figure it out. Everything looks fine. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's a pretty tough little knife, man. A little bulldog. A little bruiser. <clears throat> it's a SEMA fixed edge knife. Imagine that. Uh, the steel is a 7CR17 MOV stainless steel. I've never heard of that steel in my life. It's a Chinese steel, definitely. Um, so, stainless steel knife. Uh, the hardness is a 58, which is good. 3.35 uh, inch blade length, 
uh, like I said, and 5 30 seconds thick. So this is the kicker, right? It's a budget knife. All my knives cost like 200 bucks plus. 200 bucks with, without a sheath is a good deal for, for a custom knife. This knife is a $57 knife that is on sale right now for 20 bucks. Nope, that's wrong. 22 bucks. 22 bucks for this and this. I can't fill my car up for 22 bucks. It's, a, it's a, not even a half a tank of gas for 22 bucks. And you get a capable woods knife, uh, survival knife, pack knife, car knife, whatever you want to call it, whatever your intended purpose is for it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's not going to take the place of my Turley, my Adventure Storm, my Deering, any of those knives. But it definitely has a place in my car or a buddy can use it if he wanted to uh, that didn't have a knife. My wife can use it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a knife. It's, uh, it's going to cut things. It's going to do a good job, as you can see. Um, I don't know what else I can do. I can, I can sit here and make a bow drill kit with it. I can split down harder wood. I can cross baton. I can carve some traps and all that nonsense. But in all honesty, you know what's going to do it. Like This, is, again, is hard oak. Maybe I should have been able to go through it in two swipes, but like, what is the what is the, what is the defining factor, right? Move, scout. You're gonna, you're just gonna. All right. Well, that's it for this this video. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a follow up video on this knife, or a, I'm gonna plan on doing this for a bunch of knives now. Um, maybe once a month we'll do a budget knife review review. But uh, maybe I'll come back to these knives all at once, maybe in a year or something, and see how they've held up long term. Because that could be an issue for somebody buying a cheap or um, inexpensive knife, I guess. But yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will post the, the links at the bottom of the page where you can get this knife. You better, if you want to buy it, I suggest doing it quickly before the, the deal runs out. Uh, 57 bucks is, is not bad for a knife at all, but if you can get it for 22 bucks, buy two. <laughs> Anyways, have a good day guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one and I will be back with a trip video soon. Maybe a maybe a survival-y kind of trip soon. So Alright, bye. 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 Alright, see you later folks. So I decided we should cross the ton with it. Uh, this is a piece of hickory. And in all reality, cross batoning is something that I do with my knives, so. <laughs> well, that's dead hickory for you, and it's a clean cut. Let's get another one. Right on a knot, right on a knot here. Leave it, Scope. Wow. So truncating things, splitting things down shouldn't be an issue. This is a dead hickory. Hickory's a pretty dense wood. Scope, what's that? Pretty dense wood, so. You could also uh, split your wood down if you didn't want to baton it. Oh, stick it in a bit first. Like that. Actually, you know what? This will be a good test for it. bad. There's that hickory still. I'm gonna put it right against the knife and hit the edge of the hickory right into right into the blade. That works, eh? Now to get the knife out of there. Too shabby. Okay, so there's one one thing I really don't like. There's no swell at the end at all, and no hook near the bottom to, to, to grab onto when you're when you're chopping. 
but you can fix that. Now let me see if I can do it with the piece of paracord that's on the sheath. So there's that little piece of paracord. It's not even paracord actually. <laughs> uh, what do you want, eh? So I'm just threading it through this little lanyard hole in the exposed tang. I'm just gonna do a quick overhand knot with a small loop. And that way, what that does is gives me a little bit of a pinky hold and something to chop, chop, choke up on or to grip while I'm chopping. So let's see if that helps at all. Gotta love the train. Wouldn't be a Joe Robinette bushcraft video without the train. Again, I'm looping my pinky finger through that. And basically, my whole hand is going down here. It's really not on the blade too much at all. I don't feel like it's gonna fly out of my hand at all. It just doesn't have the weight really to chop. All right, that's it for real now, guys. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one. Love the train.